Hello, all you math maniacs out there in TV land. It's time for another amazing episode of Math Homework Helpers. Stick around. We'll be right back. To math homework helpers. This is a show where we get to help you with your math homework and give you prizes just for calling in. With us today are two super teachers. From Middleborough Elementary School, we have the super cool Mrs. Patton. And from Parkville High School, we have the super great Miss Evel. And, and, <laughs> and we also have two very special guests with us today. Elizabeth and Madeline are here to showcase two beautiful works of art from two of our favorite callers. Ollie, tell us more, man. Oh, Elizabeth and Madeline are pointing right now to Aya and Amber's artwork from Norwood Elementary. Aya and Amber created these masterpieces for the Kindness for Paws exhibit. Oh, that is so awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Elizabeth and Madeline, for showcasing these two beautiful pieces of artwork. Good job. Hey, Max and Ollie, how has your day been going so far? Oh, our day's been super duper, super. Super duper. Max and I have been working on a new scene in our upcoming two puppet show production. Want to see it? Sure, Ollie. Oh, all right. Uh, <coughs> okay, hold on. <coughs> okay, okay, here goes. <coughs> hey, Max. Hey, Ollie. How you doing on this wonderful day? I'm... And scene! That was well, it. Wow, looks like you guys still have a ways to go. Yeah, I'm thinking we have to write maybe one or two more words in the thing, but really? yeah, we'll see. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Play it by ear. <laughs> well, keep at it, fellas, and let's move on to the show. Boys and girls, if this is your first time watching, you should know that we have prizes. Oh. All you have to do is call into the show with a math question, and then you will have the chance to win one of our four very cool prizes from the Math Homework Helpers Puck to Pick a Prize Law. Ms. Patton, what are the prizes for today? This week's prizes are a crazy pen, a keychain, a calculator, and a pencil pack. Don't forget that after we help our callers with their math problem, we'll drop the puck on the puck to pick a prize wall. Mm -hmm. And the caller will win whatever prize the puck lands on. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Let's get things moving and go to the phones. The number to call is 410-494-1459. <laughs> That number again is 410-494-1459. Max, who is our first caller of the day? Our first caller of the day is Emily from Norwood. Emily, are you there? Hello? Emily? Uh, hey, how's it going? Okay. Oh. Hi, Emily. So, Emily, what is your math question for us today? All right, I think <laughs> I see which one you're looking at here. Yeah, that. So we've got three pizzas, right? What, how many yeah. pieces do we have to cut the first pizza into? How many? Can you see that again, please? I think the pizza says we have to cut your, your, I think the problem says we have to cut your pizza into two equal parts. I love pizza. Me too. So how am I gonna cut this pizza into two equal parts? Oh, with a pizza cutter. That would help. Yeah. Good, good idea, yeah. Max. Next question. <laughs> Emily, what do you think we're gonna do? I think you're supposed to cut it down the middle. Yeah, if I cut it down the middle, it's cut in half, right? Oh. So I have two equal parts. And then it says the next one we have to cut into eight equal parts. That's going to be tricky. It is. 
When hmm. we do fractions, it all has to be the same. Right. So I can cut it into two equal parts. Mm. What else do you think we can do? I think we should cut it into a, a sideways X. Oh. oh, so now we have four equal parts. Oh. That's perfect. So we have a vertical and a horizontal line. And I think that's what our last one was asking for. So let's just write that one down. It's enough for all of us to share here. Yeah. So that one, we found four equal parts. But how are we going to cut it into eight equal parts? Oh, man. Now I think you should make a real X. A real X. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, oh, wait, that wouldn't that mean it's wrong? <gasps> oh, no, I see what you're saying. No, no she's sharing no. pizza. Okay, I see what you're saying. So let's count them. We've got one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight equal parts. Mm -mm. That's perfect. So of when course. is the pizza getting here? Yeah, seriously. Does that help you out, Emily? Yep. All right. Perfect. Well, we're not done with you yet, kiddo. We got something that looks like a really small pizza over there. It's called a puck. <laughs> and I think we're gonna, oh, there we go. Oh, oh here it goes. Whoa! Very it's cool. It's a calculator. Bendable. Emily, thanks for calling. Bye bye. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll send that calculator bye. right out to you. Bye bye. Bye. Oh man, what a wonderful caller! I love starting with such a wonderful, wonderful voice. Yeah, and I can't wait to eat pizza. Oh yeah, that's it. I know. Now I'm hungry. You know, know, sometimes the pizza's not equal. Do you ever get a pizza and all the pepperoni slides to one oh. side? Ah. Oh. On half of the pizza? On yeah. half the pizza. One time I got pizza and all the mustard was on the wrong side. Oh, yeah. Mustard. Same with my bananas. Nah. Anything. I, it's just nuts. Oh, yeah. What are you going to do? We <laughs> might have to get our own pizza the next time, not share with you guys. Hmm. Whatever. All right, anyway, <laughs> moving on. Ethan from Pinewood, are you there? Yes. How's it going? Hello. Hi. So, Ethan, Hi. do you have a math question for us today? Yes. Then proceed with telling us the question. We are ready. So it says three classes have the same number of students. The teachers compare attendance on one Friday. Mr. Lopez has 92.5% of his students in, students in class. Mr. Foster has had 19 over 20 of her students in her class. In Mrs. Kelly's class, 0.9 of the students were in the class. Which teacher had the most students in class that Friday? Ooh. Wow. How can I compare these numbers? Ethan, They're all written in so many different ways. Yeah, that seems like high school math. This is tough stuff. It's I intense. know. It's a good thing we have a high school teacher here to help us. Hey, all right. What do you think we have to do in order to compare these numbers? Change it all to percentage. That's one option. So how would I do that? What does a percentage mean? I forget. It's been so long since I was in fifth grade. Oh, yeah. I can or we could change it all to decimal. We could, or we could even probably change it all to fractions. As long as we have it the same, it might help us compare. But let's go back to the whole idea of percentage. Do you remember what a percentage means? It's out of what? If I wanted to make a percentage, it would be out of? Out of 100. Perfect. You got it. Nice. And so if I, if I wanted to do something like that, hmm, how would this look? Do you want me to do the percentage? Do you want to do fractions, or do you want to do decimals? Um, I think decimals will be easier. I think you're right, actually. So what's really cool is if I take a percentage and I'm making it a decimal, do you know what I could just have to do? I'm sort of just going to move the decimal a few places because it's like I'm multiplying. And if I move my decimal point, I'm really getting, instead of 92 and 5 uh, and a half percent, I'm going to have... 0 decimal 925, which is 925 thousandths. So I can already see what class is ahead, just if I look at the two classes that have decimals. Yeah. So can we compare those two a while, Mr. Lopez, and I think you said Miss Kelly's classes? Do we know which of those has more students in it? But we still need to change Mr. Foster's to a fraction, That's I mean right. a decimal. We do, and I'm gonna set that up and I'm gonna put a 100 here to make it easier for us. But if I looked at Miss, if I looked at Kelly down here and Mr. Lopez up here, who has more, who has a greater percentage of their kids in class? Mr. Lopez. 
Yes. How did you know that? Because he's smart. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, it's sort of like we have the nine tenths. It's like 90 hundredths or 900 thousandths. So when I go to the next decimal place to compare, I could see that. So if I set this up, did, is this how you did it in school? Did you set up equivalent and make it 100? Yeah, so we would times it by 5 for both top and bottom. Yep. And do you know what 19 times 5 is? That's a tough one. That is tough. That's a lot of fives. Yeah, 90, wait, no, I got 95. Yes, yes. You're right. So if I have 95 hundredths as a fraction, if I say it out loud, I can hear it's still the same. So that's actually 95 hundredths written like this as a decimal. So you can see now, now I already know you know how to compare. So which class had the higher percentage of the kids there? Mr. Lopez. Well, if he has a nine, they both have a nine in the tenths place. So that's the same. So then I have to go to the hundredths place. Oh, so it's Mr. Foster. That's right. Yeah. Yep. That's correct. So that's your correct answer. And the really what's most important is looking and trying to make it so it's easy for you to see those numbers. So if you're looking at it and you're like, okay, I wanted to make these decimals or making them percents or making them fractions, whatever the easiest way, you could change them any way you want. Because we've looked at them, they all had a nine in the tenths place. Yeah. That can be confusing. It can. You know? Absolutely. You did a great job, Ethan. Yeah. I think it's time for a prize. Hey, so prize too. time. Yeah, let's get to something not confusing. Thank the you. Book the bigger prize wall. Book the bigger prize wall. Let's drop one. All right, there. thank you, Miss Hevel. Oh, we got the crazy pen. Oh, I love that pen. Good job. That is a crazy pen. You know what's interesting <laughs> about that pen? What? It's rather crazy. Crazy it pen. Is. Yep. It's hey, thanks for calling. You bring that out in school to check your work. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Teacher would appreciate that. Hey, wait a minute. What? I think we have one of our artists <gasps> on the phone. What? Oh, what? Are you there? Hello. Bye. Aya. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Is this one of your pieces of artwork we have up here? Yeah? yeah? You recognize it? Yeah. You're a famous artist! <laughs> Woo! Not only are you good with math, you're also good with the crayons and the markers. Yep. Famous. I love it. Wow. So you have a math problem for us today, Aya? Yes. Of course you do. We're ready. What, what's your problem? Um, part, like, something where I don't even know. Some word I don't know. That's oh, okay. That's okay. Skip it's that word. And label each line into the number of parts the line did. Oh, okay. So we're partitioning and labeling each line into the number of parts designated. Partition. Yeah, that's a big word. That's a big, word. A big word. Partition! What? Do you know that word, Ollie? Partition? Oh, yeah. My cousin had a great partition last week. Oh, there really? were balloons, punch. Oh, yeah. I've seen a partition pull a rabbit out of his hat. Wow. <laughs> See? Yeah. We totally know. These are silly guys here today. <laughs> Where? So Where what is they? that? Do you know what that Where means, a partition? Can you think of another word for they're that? Down here. Huh? Can you think of another word for partition when you did it in school? What did you have to do to these number lines? What were you doing to them? Were Partitioning? You, were, you, were you breaking them apart into equal sections? Yeah. That, sounds, that sounds great. Good. And I think the first one's that we have to split it or partition it into oh. four equal lengths. Now I know what partition is. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, I went to high school with this cousin. Oh, boy. All right, so. Right, so what do we have to do there, Miss Hevel? Well, it looks like, well, we're going to have to cut this line. Partition? Right, Aya? So if yeah. I need to cut it into four equal parts, is there an easy way where we can cut it first? Uh, probably with some scissors. Pizza cutter. <gasps> oh, it does kind of sound like that pizza problem, right? It does. Mm -hmm. That equal parts. We, we did partition. have to cut our pizza into four equal parts. So when we cut our pizza into four equal parts, do you remember what we did first? Um. Put a line in the middle? Yeah, we mm -hmm. cut it right down the middle. Nice. So now I've got two equal parts. And then what do you think we're going to do to find our four equal parts? Um, 
Well, why don't we find the middle of each of those? Oh, that's a good idea. So it looks like we've got one, two, three, and four equal parts. Hey, there we go. That's pretty awesome stuff. Some great partitioning there. Aya, does that make sense to you? Yes. See how we took the middle and then we made two more middles? I believe the word was <laughs> partitioning. Yes, and do we have to write those as fractions? Oh, good question. So it looks like on some of your other problems you had to label them with fractions. So we could label the first one as your first partition out of four. Ooh, fancy. And then what about your second one? Two. Two out of four, perfect. And? Oh, oh I see a pattern. Three out of four. Mm -hmm. Do you know, sometimes it's tricky when we do these because we label the line, but we're counting the space. And so we have to think about that whole space if we colored it in. We would have to get all the way to this line to have three fourths. That can mm -hmm. be confusing. It is a little tricky. It is. The but next we got one's it. really tricky too because I would, how many do you have to partition for the next number line? Three. Ooh. Ooh. So three equal lengths. That's a trickier one. How do we do that? So if I cut it in half and then half again, I actually get into four. Is there an easy way to cut this one into three parts or do we just kind of have to guess? Um, I think how you should cut it is like two lines. So we're gonna need two lines. We are gonna need two lines. That's a yep. great idea. Can we yep. put them anywhere? As long as they're equal. Oh, oh okay. that's a hard answer. Yes, your teacher would love to hear that word equal. Yeah, so I think answer. I'm pretty equal there. Oh, very good job. Oh, hey, look so at that. So just like you last well. time, if I had one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, what do you think we're going to do this time? If I'm um, Because this time is a... One, or, yeah, one, break apart three. Yeah. This is one third and two thirds. Perfect. Here we go. Did we solve it? There's Perfect. another one, There's but another I. One. There's oh. another one. We're on a roll. And this one sort of can be a little tricky too because how many parts are we supposed to partition this number line? Six. Six. Oh, oh man. I know. It's like combining two things we just did. This is a partition party. It is. Like it. So yeah. where do we start, kiddo? Yeah, what do we do? Um, well, I know six is an even lines? number. Yes, we're going to draw five lines. Mm -hmm. And like oh, we said that tricky. it's six is an even number, right? So when yeah. this one was an even number, we could cut it down the middle. So we can try cutting this one down the middle again. So there's one of our five lines. And then if I cut down the middle, how many are left? Like, I used one out of my five lines. How many are left? Four. Four. Oh, yeah. oh mm -hmm. so that just means each side will get how many? Two. Perfect. Yeah, that's it. Wow, great job. Oh, that was easy. Not bad. Yeah. And so this one was six equal parts. So what are our fractions going to look like? Um, one break. Part six. Perfect. Yep, one sixth. Two sixths. Two sixths. Well, there's the middle. Three sixths. Three sixths. Awesome. Great job. Wow. That was a tough one, Aya. Yeah. Wait a minute. Why didn't you write six sixths? Good question. Oh. Good question. Well, if I have six slices of pizza out of yeah. six slices of pizza, do I have my whole pizza? <gasps> you do. Wait, where's the pizza? Well, I think we need to order it still. Oh, yeah, we got to order the pizzas. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Right in this case, it makes pizza. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here it is. It's time to drop the puck to make a prize. Puck to make a prize. I wonder what it's going to be. And Whoa, it oh, zipped across there. Woo. That crazy was cool. Pen. Crazy pen. Crazy pen. You know something I've noticed about those crazy pens? What's that? They're very crazy. They I are crazy. I just like that you could high five. Oh, yeah. Hey, look at that. Pen five. <laughs> totally. Love it. Hey, Ollie. 
Yo. We have another caller? We do. You guys ready? Uh, oh, okay. I'm ready. I'm, I'm not ready for this. Quit playing oh. with the Puck to Pick a Prize Wall. Yeah. You've already got it. Sorry. There we go. Okay. <laughs> on the phone now, we have a sixth grader. Ooh. You guys ready oh, for this? Yeah, Miss Hamill, this is all you. This is big yes. time. All right. I will. Okay, I will try. this is Bobby <laughs> from Arbutus Middle. Hey, Hello. Bobby. Hello. 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 Hi, how are you doing this week, buddy? Good? Yep, I am. Nice. Good to hear you again. So, what is your question for us today, Bobby? We are ready. Okay. Five plus eight F plus two. Can you say that one more time? Mm -hmm. Five plus eight F plus two. Does that look right, Bobby? Is that yes. right? Okay. Okay. All right. Go. Perfect. And then F equals three. Oh. Oh, this is like algebra, isn't it? It does look like algebra. It's algebra. I wow. Wow. I'm Let me actually get a simplifying look. algebra. Uh, this is. Where do you even begin with this, Bobby? Okay. You five plus eight parentheses. You put three in parentheses. Oh. Do and you then remember? plus two. Oh. So I learned in school. If so, you put so if a number is in parentheses and it's right next to that number, you got to multiply. That's okay. awesome. Mm -hmm. So 5 plus 24 equals 29 plus 2 equals 31. Whoa, we got to catch up. Hold on. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. sorry. 5 plus, Five 24. plus 8 times 3 equals 24. Got it. Mm -hmm. Equals 29. Got it. And then you said 5 plus 24 is 29. Yep, is that, and then 29 plus 2 equals 31. How did you know to multiply first? Thanks to um, my teacher, Mr. Malachuk, he actually taught, told me that if um, if this number is in parentheses and if it's next to a number, you have to multiply. Yeah, we think of our order of operations mm -hmm. there. When we see parentheses or multiply, we want to do that before we add. Yep. It's like oh, the that's... song, multiply, divide, and subtract. Ooh. Ah! What I'm song is that? I'm not familiar with that song, Max. It's our Max Ever Cover Show song. <laughs> Whoa, I guess I need to read the lyrics a little bit more clearly. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Holy mackerel. It's only one of the greatest pieces of music ever written. Well. Yep. Hey, Bobby, guess what? What? First of all, you should come work at this show because you're awesome at math. Yeah. Right? yeah. Number what? two, it's time to drop the puck. Here we go. Puck the Enterprise Let's see what it's going to be. Oh, oh yeah. man. Very nice. That crazy hands of <laughs> or like that. You know the answer in class, and you don't want to raise your hand too high because you're tired. You can just lift you that just up. Just do that. Exactly. Get a couple, like, you know, six more inches on that. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Boy, he solved that fast, didn't he? He, he, he did. did. He's great. I don't Maybe. think he needed us. Bobby, thanks for calling, buddy. Call again next week. Bye-bye. Hey, you guys ready for another caller? I think so. On yeah. the phone, we, we have a legend here. Oh, they call yeah. in all the time. This is Mamie from Wellwood. Oh, Mamie! Hello! How Hi. are you? How are you Hi. doing this week? Uh, hey, yeah. my buddy, Miss O'Neill. Uh, uh, tell her Max says hi, okay? Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so what is your question for us today, Mamie? Um, circles of fractions that are in simplest form. Write the simplest form of each fraction that can be simplified. Okay. I like that okay. word, simple. Simple's good. It's a nice word. So what are the fractions that you have? One, four. I'll be right back. Okay. What else? Six eight. Okay. Six twelve. Is that Three, it? Oh. Now. Okay. What was that other one? Two three. Two thirds. Mm-hmm. And four tenths. And the last one's five. Ah! Five-eighths, okay. Hi, Max. How's it going? We missed you. Well, what's up with my Okay. Arm? So I when I look at all these fractions, I know already that th definitely there's one already in simplest form. Do you know which one is in simplest form? No. Well, do you know what a unit fraction is? It's when it's just one part. So when we were doing all those number lines before, and we had like one-third and one-sixth. So I know automatically if I have a one in my numerator, that's my unit fraction because it's just one part of the group. And that's already in simplest form. 
So that one's already done. I don't have to do anything with that problem. Okay? Yeah. So then I look at that 6 eighths, and I do notice something about them. I notice that there's, they're both even numbers, so oh. that helps me a little bit. And what do I know about even numbers? Well, they're not Steven? They're not odd. Oh, this they're, is true. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. What yep. could I? You're welcome. What can I divide both of them by? Um. Well, when I'm going to, when I, ha what, how did you do this in class when you were coming up with equivalent, when you were simplifying the fractions and had to figure this out? What did you have to do? Did you have to list anything? Um, no. Well, we didn't really do it, but it's on our homework list. Oh, okay. So a lot of times we are trying to figure out, well, what could I divide both the numerator and denominator by without getting any leftovers? Nothing. Nothing. So I have to think about, well, uh, do, is it coming back to you? Nice. Um, so what? I'm going to sort of write over here on this side, and I'm going to say, what numbers can I multiply by to get 6? These are called your factors. So I can do 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. Okay? Yeah. And then for 8, I could do 1 times 8 or 2 times 4. And then I want to look for the greatest one they have in common. What's Ooh, the, the greatest? greatest one they have in common? Out of those? Um, pizza. No pizza. Yeah. Is it pizza? Do they both have six listed? No. Um, they both have one, and they both the have greatest. two. And what's the greatest one? Pizza. Oh. Wait, <laughs> what? It's got to be two. It's two. Two. Yes. So that means I'm going to divide both my numerator and denominator by two, because that's the great thing about fractions. When I have the same number in my numerator to denominator, it's sort of like dividing by 1, and so it won't change the value. So 6 divided by 2 is? 3. Yep. And six, um, 8 divided by 2 is? 4. 4. So mm -hmm. my answer in simplest form is 3 fourths. Ah. Okay, I'm going to teach you a trick for the next one. Trick. You've got a lot of problems here. Whoa. Okay. Six twelfths. What do I know if I double my six to get my, if I double my numerator to get my denominator, I know that it's actually equal to one half. Oh. So nice five shortcut. tenths is one half. Oh, yeah, because six is half of 12. That's that makes right. sense. Oh, yeah. Think about a pizza. If you had four eighths of a pizza. That's all I've been thinking about. I know. That's why I brought it pizza. up. Pizza. Maybe half the pizza had the bananas. Yep. Don't forget the mustard. I don't, I don't like that one. And the oh, other so half good. was pepperoni. Oh, there you go. So four eighths, that's half the pizza. So here we have, so anytime you can double the numerator to get that denominator, you know it's half. So that makes it easy. You don't have to do anything. That's a cool trick. Cool. It is a cool trick. So when's the pizza getting here? Not yet. Oh. So let's see. The two thirds, I feel like there's a trick for that, but... I feel like it's, most of the time, if yes. the numerator is one more than the denominator, it's usually in simplest form. It really is. So, mm -hmm. so like uh, seven eighths, right? Would yeah. Be simplest oh, yeah. form. Five, five six. There we go. So this one, two thirds, is already in simplest form. We don't have to do anything. I love that. I know. Easy. Now, based on what we did before over here for six eighths, what do you think I should divide the four and the ten by? Since they're both even numbers, what can I divide them by? Um, two. That's right. When I have even numbers, sometimes it works just to divide by two. And here, I'm going to get two fifths. And that is the simplest form. Now, five eighths is a little trickier because we have to think back to those factors. Um, I could do one times five. That's the only fa Ooh. That's the only factor of um, one of five, the only factors of five. But for eight, it could be one times eight or two times four. Sorry, I'm squeezing those numbers in there. It's a beautiful two. The it looks like we only have one in common. And if we only have one in common, that means it's already in simplest form. So five eighths is in simplest form. Hmm. That's really cool. Nice. I like that you're going through a process to make sure. So there's no guessing. Yes, mm -hmm. you have to look for the greatest one they have in common. Right. Does that help you out, Amy? 
Yes. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, let's help you out some more. That Bring one. Down, Miss that one deserves a prize. prize. I wonder what it's gonna be. <coughs> oh. Ooh, we got oh, the pencil the pack. Ah, pencil pack. Thank nice. You. you know what's nice about the pencil pack too? You could like keep your headphones in it at school. Yeah, that's right. Or like, if you have a mouse, you could put your mouse in it. Ooh, that's Wait, oh, that's good. Oh my gosh, a mouse. You're probably not supposed to have a live mouse yeah, at school. Yeah, you shouldn't have animals no, in school. Not that Not a good idea. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> well, you know, we use math in so many ways in life, not just here in math class. So let's head out to the streets of BCPS to see who Maria is talking to now. I love Maria! Maria! <laughs> Hola, yo soy Maria, and I love math. Here oh at BCPS, oh. we use math every day, everywhere, and in adorable. every <laughs> office and school. <laughs> Come with me, I'll show you how. Today, I'm here at Warren Elementary in La Infamaria, which is the nurse's suite with Mrs. Melito. Hola, Mrs. Melito. Hola, Maria. Can you tell me how that you use math as a nurse? Sure, I use math all day long in the health suite. When kids are sick, they come to visit me. First, I have to take their vital signs. Everybody can watch a reflex. I have to read blood thermometer, measuring their body temperature. I have to count how many times their heart beats in a minute to come up with their heart rate. I have to count how many times they breathe in a minute to come up with their respirations. If I need to give them medication, I have to weigh them, and then I have to calculate how many grams of medication they need per pound. For instance, if they weigh 50 pounds, I have to then calculate 50 pounds times the amount of grams I want to give them per pound to come up with the dosage. I also use math to collect data. I fill out a tally sheet at the end of each day to see how many students I saw and what kind of illnesses they had. That way I can look for trends in illnesses and prepare for an outbreak like with the flu or uh, do some preventive measures if I see we're having a lot of injuries at our school. I also use math to stock my health suite, estimating how many ice packs I need based on how many ice packs I used in the days before. I also have to calculate how many supplies I need for my health suite based on how many students I have at my school. As you can see, Maria, I couldn't do my job as a school nurse without math. Wow, well thank you so much for sharing. Sure, thanks for coming. Adios. Adios. Math on the street. Hola, yo soy Maria, and I love math. Here at BCPS, we use math every day, everywhere, and in every office and school. Come with me, I'll show you how. Today, I'm here at BCPS Copy and Print Center with Mark. Hello, Maria, how are you today? I'm great, Mark. Can you tell me what you're doing and how you use math? Sure, I use math every day at work. Today, I'm printing notepads. When we print pads, first we have to determine how many sheets of paper have to be printed. Mm -hmm. For example, we are printing a job now that is for 12,000 pads with 100 sheets per pad. The artwork is set up to print four pads per sheet, so to figure out how many sheets of paper you would have to multiply 12,000 times 100 and divide by four. Oh, I get it. This will give you the total number of sheets to be printed. 12,000 times 100 equals 1.2 million sheets. Then divide by four per sheet, which comes to 300,000 sheets of paper to get printed. <gasps> Wow, that's a lot of paper. After that, we have to measure to cut the sheet down into the individual pads. With careful measuring, each pad measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Oh, cool. Well, thank you, Mark. You showed us another great way of how we can use math every day at BCPS. Well, thank you, Maria. <laughs> have a great day. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, too. That is awesome. There are so many cool things in awesome. math, I tell you what. Hey, so what do you got up on the board there? Yeah, what's that? Well, you know, we have this really cool question we thought we would solve, and <coughs> maybe you guys could help us. Coffee. It doesn't have pizzas, but maybe they were at a pizza restaurant. Oh, wow. okay. Cool. It says, uh, Kathy works at a restaurant. On Monday, she served nine tables with six people at each table. Ooh. On Tuesday, she served 86 people. Wow. She wants to know how many more people she served on Tuesday than on Monday. Oh, so interesting. This is, this is sort of a tricky question because it's asking us to do a couple more than things. one thing. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think, guys? If she had nine tables, 
on Monday, was, didn't she just serve nine people? No, because well, I, I – oh, go ahead, Matt. Go ahead, yeah, I was going to say it depends on how many people are at each table. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And they, we did learn here that there and are six whether they were people. eating pizza. Oh, yeah. And if there was pizza. Is that we important? could turn this into a fraction question soon. Mm -hmm. So if I knew there was nine tables and there's six people at each table, I guess I could draw out nine circles and put six. Would that be a good way to do oh, it? That might take a while. Oh, uh, it might take yeah. a while. So if I'm I mean, doing something like that, it would be groups. Do we have the time is the question. Um, it could be groups of. We have groups mm. of. Oh, I like that word of. Oh, wait I know the word of. Do that you means Max? multiply, right? <laughs> what is it? It does. It means to multiply. So we're going to say we could do nine times nine tables. six. And six. so if we have nine times six, oh, this is the nines trick. Oh, I love the nines trick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if you hold your hands in front of you. Yeah, let's get the camera up. Camera oh, up. Camera. Camera. <laughs> camera. Let's go, camera. I guess I can turn around. And camera. So more sense. We'll just count backwards. There it okay, is. There, there we go. go. Okay, so here, I'm going to use you as an example. If All we're right. doing nine times six, these are the best things. So what you're doing is you're going to count your six. So right? Right? Am I going to do it yep. like this? One, two, three, four, five. And then you put down oh. that finger. Six. The six the six digit. The six digit. We had to do it backwards so that we can get the correct answer. This is our tens place, 45, and our ones place. Backwards. Yes, backwards. 54. Wow. Oh, my gosh. And I did it wrong. 54. <laughs> That's there we, okay. And I, <laughs> we got five over by Max and four over by Ollie. There we go. So we have 54. <laughs> and what's really cool is sometimes some of, some of our friends, they always know the tens. Mm -hmm. And then just take that last group away. And yeah. they know 60, nine. If we had 10 times 6, it's 60. So 9 times 6 would be 54. Well, we can obviously see that she definitely served more people on Tuesday. Absolutely. Yes, so how are we going to figure out how many more? What are we going to do? So we have to find the difference between difference. them, right? Ooh, yeah. right. Wait a minute. What? Difference. I've heard this word before in math. It means something. It does. Uh, oh, I know. It means I have to call the pizza guy. Yeah. I'll be right back. Order of operations. Oh. Coming up. Order of operations. Yeah, we have to order the pizza operations. Uh, I think we're going to do subtraction here. And I like this subtraction problem because I can line my place value up. I don't even have to regroup. Mm -mm. So I have two and then three. So the difference is 32. So she served 32 more people. And I want to label my problems so that we know what we're talking about on Tuesday. And you know, speaking of those order of operations, have you ever heard of gems? I have not heard of gems. Okay, so you can help me because this is this might be new learning for all of us. So let's find out. So if I have, um, I recently saw that another way because sometimes we use um, when we get older, and we're in middle school and high school, later in elementary school, we say we use please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. But somebody just taught What's me wrong with her? this called gems, and this is another way to do your order of operations a little bit shorter. So gems would stand for grouping symbols, oh, okay. and especially in high school, because you guys have We've lots got, of different yes. symbols. E stands for exponents, and then we would have M would be, this is where we get tricked up in elementary school sometimes, because this actually is, you could are going to multiply or divide, or you're going to divide or multiply, depending on what comes first okay. in the problem. And then the S would be for adding or subtraction. So I feel like for middle and high school, this might be a fun way to do it. Yeah, that because sounds of, like a great a idea. A lot of times with the grouping symbols, it can be a little bit tricky. In elementary school, sometimes we get confused like, oh, if we say, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, then we Does sort of. Does multiply come before divide? Yeah, and we sort of get stuck in the order that it appears in the words and not the order that it appears in the problem. And that's oh, what's most wait. important. Oh, wait. You mean this stands for something? G E M S. I got it. You got it? Giant evaporated monkey science. Oh, whoa. Well, totally sure. I'll figure that one out on my own. I I'm like impressed, it. Ollie. I'm mm -hmm. really impressed. Is that right? Well, really, Close. we're talking about the order of operations. M does stand for monkey, right? It does stand for monkey. Can you make it stand for something with pizza? Speaking of pizza, oh. hey, I need to know. I got the guy on the phone. How many Informats. pizzas are we getting here? We getting three pizzas? Oh, yeah. Uh, there's how many of us? One, 
Two, three, four. I meant four. So let's get 15. 15 oh, pizzas ooh, coming up. All right, I'm going to put the order in now. That's a lot of pizzas. Okay, right. What's that? That's a lot of pizzas. What? Are you not I mean, ready? each pizza usually has eight slices, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's and how many pieces of pizza do you think we're each going to eat? Well, I, I don't know. 35. At least three. Four. Three. Let's, let's say we're each going to eat three pieces of pizza. Okay. Okay. So they're split into eight. <gasps> we're each going to eat three. So how many pizzas of pizza total are we going to eat? Well, let's see. If we 40. said... 45? So if you, if Ali eats three. Okay, I'll eat three. Hold and Max, on, you eat three. I'll eat three. So how many pieces of pizza do we have so far? That's, let's see, three plus three is uh, six. Six. Okay, okay, perfect. And then I'll eat three. Okay. And you'll eat three. So that's, this is not, this that's is pizza three plus three. Want. Wait, that's six more. <laughs> yeah, that's somebody's six getting more. kind of so, change with the pizzas. So oh, how yeah. many pieces of pizza do we need? So wait a minute. Three plus three, three plus, three. plus three plus three. Plus three plus three. Is um, wait. You know what? Instead of adding more, we could just multiply. Oh, we could. There's four of us, what was and there's three thing? pieces each. So that means we would have a total of three times four. Twelve. Twelve. We want twelve slices of pizza, we right? Twelve slices of pizza. So how many pi uh, slices of pizza? Or so how that many would pizzas make it do we need? improper fraction. These are. So that's going to be one whole pizza, and ooh, look at this. Four eighths. Oh, oh what do we say about four eighths? Oh, that means we can simplify it. Yes. Oh, then wait, wait, because four is half of eight, so that's automatically half a pizza. There we go. So, we, so we need a pizza and a half. That's nice. right. Can we order half a pizza? No, I think oh. we'll have to order at least a second pizza. All right, so Maybe let's round it up. Half. Let's get a, we'll get a coupon. Yeah. You can get two, two for one. Oh, okay, nice. Max, order two pizzas. You got it. I'll be right back, guys. All okay. Right. All right. <laughs> Wait, we didn't tell him what to get on the pizza. Oh, hopefully not bananas. I know. He's you guys really don't like deep. bananas in your pizza? Okay. Um, I don't know where Max just went. He went to go get pizza. Oh, he did? He did leave to go uh -huh. get pizza? Well, while Max is getting some pizza, here's another problem. Oh, my goodness. I feel oh. like we have to resize this. Let's see. Oh. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Hey, fancy. <laughs> Very nice. Oh boy. So Miss Reynolds has $153. She buys a bicycle for 105. Then she finds $20 at the bottom of her purse. Wow. What? I love when that happens. <laughs> I usually sweet. only find a dollar. It's never $20. <laughs> How much money does she have now? Ooh. You gotta add all this up. All right. Well, she had 153, right? But she bought a bike. Oh. So am I going to add those two numbers? No. You got to take something away because she had to pay for the bike. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so maybe we'll start with how much she had. All right. So she had 153 Okay. So write that down. So, okay. So $153. Mm -hmm. And then what are we going to do? Well, she, her bike cost 105 So she spent 105 So we got to take away 105 of that. Perfect. Let's take yeah, away. Like Let's subtract this. There you go. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Oh. I see a problem. What's a math problem? <laughs> yes, it is for sure a math problem. So this, and it's interesting because this question says to use bar diagrams, and I can see how like a number line might help us in something like this. But let's go ahead and regroup. I can't do 3 minus 5, so I have to take a group of 10. So now I have 4 here, and I'm going to add that group of 10 here. So now I have 13 oh, that minus 5. There you go. So what's 13 minus 5? Ooh, eight. That's eight. And then four minus nothing is four. Yep. And one minus one is zero. So she was left with $48. So is that it? Uh, wait, there was something about finding money. What oh, did that's, it say? Oh, that's right. Find she that found $20. Dollars. Dollars. $20 at the bottom of her. Oh, so she found more. So now you're going to have to add. Yeah. Exactly. Right? And that's an easy one to add. I could have probably even done mental math with that because I could have even said 20 is like just adding a 10 and a 10. So she has $68 now. Wow. That was pretty good. Boy, lucky her for finding 20 bucks. Who finds $20? Not hey, guys. Hey, guys. Guess what? Yeah. What's up? I just ordered the pizzas. You're never going to guess what happened. Oh, Max. Where I are found you? 20 bucks. Did uh, you? Oh, it's so cool. Anyway. Where was it? Will that cover the cost of the pizza? What's that? Will that cover the cost of the pizza? It will. Awesome. Oh, this is a great day. This is a great day. So the pizza guy should be here any minute. So we just right. got to keep an eye out for the door. Oh, so Max, keep, yeah. what did you get on the pizzas? We what didn't do you mean, tell you I, our toppings. Oh, I got, uh, you know, the usual. Oh. 
mustard and bananas. Good. Oh, Pepperoni. Good. Oh. And some of those chilled slugs. Oh. Yeah. Man, I love those. Yeah, I know. They're so good. I know. Now my mouth is watering. Just yeah. thinking about chilled slugs. Oh, yeah. Well, why don't we take a break for a minute and ah. let's head out to one of our very own Baltimore County Public Schools and check in for a Mighty Math Minute. There we go. Oh, good. My name is Ty J and this is your Mighty Math Minute. Mighty Math Minute! No, there is a lot. Let me stop it. Marco wants to buy a book of magic that costs $17.50. He gives the salesperson a $20 bill. How much change would Marco get back? This is what we know. The book cost $17.50, and he gave the salesperson a $20 bill. So what we have to do to get the answer is do $20 minus $17.50. So first we will do 0 minus 0, which is 0. 0 minus 5, which we can't take 0 from 5. So what we have to do is have to regroup from the 2, make it a 1, and then make the 10 and make it to a 9 and then make this to a 10, this will be a 5, and then we would put the decimal point here. Then we would do mi 9, mi 9 minus 7, which is 2, and then 1 minus 1 is 0. So Marco will get $2.50 back. Oh, that is so cool! Ooh. I love all this math stuff! Me too. Math you know is what? awesome. I think I've come to the right place. I think you we have. have. We yeah. do a ton of math here. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, there's the door. I'll get it. Hold on. Oh, yeah, get that. I didn't know we were expecting visitors. I didn't either. Oh. Oh, here he is. He's the pizza guy. Oh. All right. I didn't know we had delivery. Oh, my. Oh. How's it going, man? <laughs> uh. Uh. Did you order the pizza? Uh, yeah, we ordered two pizzas. Yep, yep, because we realized we needed three slices each, which was a total of... 12 pizzas, and even though we would have some left over, we ordered two full pizzas, so maybe we'll have some for tomorrow or something. Yep. <laughs> okay, then. I need you to follow me to my car. Why? Why? I put the pizzas on top of the car. They're right here. I, why didn't you just bring them in? You're delivering the pizzas. My back. What do you mean your back? I got a bad back. All right. Guys, I'll be right back. Okay, Matt. Right. Good luck. Yeah. You know what, Max? They might solve a math, a math problem while you're gone. There you go. I wonder what kind of pizza. What kind of delivery guy shows up without the pizzas? That's a little odd. And he left them in the car? Yeah. You know, on top of the car. I hope he didn't leave them and then, uh-oh. I wonder if they're going to still be there. Uh-oh. Guys! Yeah? I got some news for you. Oh, uh -oh. boy. The what pizzas were not on top of the car. No. Oh. They were just... under the car and super delicious! Wait. I'll go get it set up in the kitchen. Okay. You, you know, guys I don't might mind have something to do after the show. I might not have time to stay for pizza. You guys don't mind pizza that's been run over by a car. Yeah, Are that's you? a little that's that's a little iffy for me. It's an '89 Corolla. Weren't we talking about that we wanted to go and do some more math? Oh, we at were the talking store. about oh. that. We were gonna figure out how much our groceries cost. Yeah. All okay. set. All right, well, let's finish up the show first. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So what do we got up here now? Okay, we have another problem to try to solve right now. Okay. So it says a 135-page notebook has 33 writing lines on each page. Oh, boy. What is the total Ooh. number of writing lines in the entire notebook? Wow. This kind of sounds like one we did with the tables before, right? But the numbers are so much they bigger. They are, so it would be really hard to draw a picture for these. Big it numbers would are awesome. Be. How could we go about this? Hmm. hmm. Well, I don't know. You're the teachers. <laughs> yeah, come on, guys. That's right. We are. So I wonder... I wonder if we're going to be, if it would be like repeated addition, if I was drawing it out, you would really see that we are going to be adding 33, 33 135 <laughs> times. Oh my goodness. That would, yeah, do that. That would take uh. 11 minutes. And you know, I don't know if we have 11 minutes. So it might just so happen that we do. <laughs> so <laughs> the other thing we could do is multiply. Oh, oh yeah. We have 135 times 33. So when I write it out like this, uh, it's sort of hard to do that way. Yeah. It is. That's tricky. I you like writing my numbers one over top of the other. I think that would be a better choice for this type of problem. Does it matter which one goes on top? I Good like question. to put the 
bigger number up top. Okie dokes. But the order does not matter does not. with um, multiplication or addition. And you know what else I noticed about this problem? The, the second number we're multiplying by is 33. So oh. we're multiplying by the 3 in the 1's place and, and then, then the, the 3 thing again. in the 10's place. Oh. So once we do it once, we can sort of know how we're going to do it again. Oh, but there's going to be something you're going to have to put in the That's place. right. Uh, I, mean, I know where this is going. Don't, I don't, don't give away the secret for the 10's okay. place okay. yet, Matt. Okay. Spoiler alert. Yeah, I'm going to keep so it if we have 3 times 5, everybody, that's really easy. <laughs> Because we get a skip true. count by five. Five, ten, fifteen. Fifteen. So I put down my I'm gonna put down my ones place and I regroup my tens place and I'm regrouping it over the next number I'm gonna multiply by. So in this case it's the tens place. So then we're gonna do three times nine, which is or nope, three nope. times three, which is nine, yep. plus one more, which is ten. Yep. Again, putting down my ones place, regrouping. Yep. And then three times one is three, plus one more is four. So we knew, we right here, we just, all we did was basically we said 135 times 3. And this mm -hmm. will help if we're doing partial products. So I have 135 times 3 because I did the ones place. I always cross out whatever I regroup so I don't make a mistake with that. I'm even going to cross out my ones place. I'm done with that. I don't even have to worry about it. And done. then you said the ones place and the tens place were the same. But this is the tens place. So uh, I have to start by writing my yeah. product in the tens place, which means I need to put a zero. zero. Max! Yes, Max, you're Woo! right. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't hold it any longer. You're good. So we put a zero there. And now it's going to be the same thing. And I'm going to know what my answer is. But you know, sometimes I see boys and girls make a mistake with this. Because when I do this first one three times five and I get my 15, they get a little bit thrown off because, wait, my five is over here now and not in the ones place, but that's where it's supposed to be. And then three times three is nine plus one more is ten. And then three times one is three plus one more is four. So when I did this part here, I am saying 135 times 30. So it's the two parts that then I have to put it back together, and that's why we add after we multiply both parts. Same thing if we did a time if we had a three-digit number we were multiplying by, then we would have the hundreds place. So we would have to put two zeros down. Those partial products are very useful. Exactly. So we're adding. Look at all these zeros. That yeah. surely makes it easy. And then the comma is going. What is this question about? Okay, so four thousand four hundred. 55 lines in this book. Wow. That's a lot of lines in there the book. There is a lot of lines. Yes. Well, maybe we should work on those lines for your uh, skit, right? Yes. Ah. You need a notebook to add some details to your um, skit. Not oh, a bad idea. I think this is, oh my goodness, everybody. I think we have somebody calling in. Maybe they want to give us a problem to solve. Let's do it. Who's on the phone, Ollie? Oh, on the phone right now, we have Amber from Norwood. <laughs> Amber! Hello! Hello! Hi. Amber, are you one of our artists? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh. Thanks so much for calling in. You do a wonderful job with the mighty pen and Yeah, did you see that? It's beautiful. They look beautiful. So nice. Yeah, we have them on display here. We'll keep them up for a couple weeks. Is that okay with you? Yeah. You are now a famous artiste. Famous? <laughs> How does it feel to be famous? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we might need your autograph later. Yeah, yeah totally. Right. So what's your problem for us, kiddo? Um, it's a unit fraction is a unit fraction is a rep repre representation of a single part of partition shape. Label an each image with a unit fraction and shape. All right. We were talking about we unit were. fractions before. And we said a unit fraction was one out of however many parts we had. Yep. So do you have a unit fraction you want us to look at? Um, yes. All right, go ahead. Tell us what it is. It's number four. Oh, number four. Do we have the worksheet? I don't know if we have that one. How many parts are... Is it a shaded in part? Uh, there's three shapes. What shape do you want me to do? Oh, there's three shapes. So are uh, they a okay. rectangle and it has a, how many equal parts are in that rectangle? There's a rectangle that has one, 
seven things that are shaded in. Okay, so this oh, here. That so, one. Okay. and how many in the whole thing are shaded? Are are there? How many parts was it partitioned? What was it split up into? How many equal parts? Eight. So, what's our unit fraction going to be if there's eight equal parts? Um. I started for the fraction shaded. I did one seven. Okay, okay so, so there's seven parts shaded, right? Mm-hmm. But how many total parts did you say there were? Eight. Eight. So the shaded will be seven out of eight. Mm-hmm. Because there's eight parts total. We always have to think about our total when we're writing our fractions. Mm -hmm. Totally. So a total, unit total. fraction just means one part. So one part of that whole group. And how many were in the whole group? There was. Shaded and not shaded, the whole thing. Oh, what was not shaded Every was um, one. Yep, there was one that was not shaded but out of seven. one. Well, eight, eight. That's there right, eight. there we go. So it just happened to be that there was one not shaded but even if there was two not shaded, the unit fraction would still be one eighth because the unit represents one of the whole thing that's been partitioned. So if we look at our next one on your paper, how many equal parts are there? Four, it's like a... Yep, right, so our unit fraction will be one out of four. One, our unit fraction is one out of four? One out of four because there's four equal parts. And, and for the fraction shaded, I did one that I didn't know the rest. So it looks like we have three boxes shaded, right? Yeah. So we're going to have three out of, how many were total? Three out of four. You got Perfect. it. There it is. There yeah. it is. Hey, Pizza Guy, what are you doing here? Hey. Oh, look what you guys are doing. Oh, hi. How's it going? Doing good. Does All that right, help let's... you with your homework problems? I think it helps. Okay. Yeah. Let's drive to the park. Here we let's go. see what it's going to be. Oh, a calculator. Woo! All right, we will send our calculator out to you, kiddo. Thanks for calling. Well, kids, that's all we have time for this episode. Mm -hmm. Be sure to tune in next week. And remember, we do re-air each episode, so be sure to watch. You can even watch these episodes online on our YouTube page. Nice. Check it out and be sure to tell your friends to watch, too. We look forward to seeing everybody again next time. Only, Only here, here on BCPS TV. TV. Calculator! Calculator! <laughs> calculator! 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 Both of you guys say it together. <laughs> yeah. Calculator. <laughs> Woo! Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Calculator. Bye. Bye. I'll just dance for a while. You can dance. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Do you want me to get you the calculator? Bye. It matches you. <laughs> <laughs>